So uh, Pang, um, we'd love to hear more about you and your campaign. Well, thank you everyone for the introductions. It's a pleasure to meet everyone. And thank you so much for having me here. And I just wanna say a special thank you to Norma and Cheryl for the invitation to be here this morning. It truly really is an honor to be here with the Grassroots North Shore, a great group of community leaders, and thank you for that. Uh, so my name is Peng Her, and I'm running to be your next Lieutenant Governor. As you know, we must hold on to the governor's seat in office this fall. And in order to do that, we really need a strong ticket. And Governor Evers really needs a strong partner, both in the campaign trail and in the office. This is why so many people urge me to run, because they know that the combination of my leadership experience my lived experience, and my ability to organize and energize voters across this great state of ours makes me the strongest candidate for Lieutenant Governor. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. So currently, I am the CEO for the Mong Institute. We are a nonprofit that provides mental health services, training and education to improve health care and educational achievement for communities of color throughout the state of Wisconsin. I have helped lead community development and promise zoning initiatives for the Urban League of Greater Madison. I oversaw an outreach for a cutting edge program here at the UW-Madison designed to help eliminate poverty. I've changed policy at the national, state and local level. And as you can see, my career has been about making communities stronger. As an executive, I've led diverse teams and created public private partnerships. As a small business owner, I've met payroll and learned firsthand about what it takes to make a business succeed. But I'm also a first generation American. I was born in Laos in 1971 during the Vietnam. My father was a school teacher before having to join the army and my mother took care of the family farm while raising myself and my five siblings. Because of the Hmong's alliance with the United States during the war, we were then targeted for genocide at the end of the war. My family and I had to flee Laos uh, at nighttime into Thailand. We stayed at a refugee camp for a time being before we immigrated to America. So on December 12, 1976, we landed in all places Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, it wasn't the frozen tundra of Wisconsin, but coming from a tropical place to uh, Des Moines in December, uh, it felt like a world away, right? Um, and 10 years later, I became a US citizen. I put myself through Central College in Iowa majoring in physics, and I also worked my way through graduate school at DePaul University in Chicago, where I earned my master's degree in physics. Uh, and I got my first job at Argonne National Lab in Chicago as the first Hmong physicist. My wife and I, we have three wonderful children, two in college and one in high school. Our oldest is actually at the UW-Milwaukee uh, there. And our youngest just got her driver's license a couple months ago. <laughs> So I call these my expensive years. And I think you guys, you know what I mean with that. Um, but my children are the living, breathing proof the American dream endures, right? They are the fruit of the vision of my grandparents who sacrificed everything, right? Uh, to get on the plane <clears throat> with nothing but the clothes on their backs to come to this country so that I and they would have a better life. So that's my personal story, my lived experience that has really led me to become a public servant the public service I am today. I believe in healthcare is a fundamental right and not a privilege and I support universal healthcare and I also support expanding Medicaid. That's why I serve as the president of the board for Access Community Health Centers that provides healthcare to uninsured and the underinsured mm -hmm. population because I'm committed to making sure that everyone has access to quality healthcare. I will fight to protect a woman's access to reproductive health care. So it's available and accessible to women throughout the state. And I firmly believe that an individual has a right to make the health care decisions that's right for them. And that's why I believe that we need to codify Roe versus Wade. As Lieutenant Governor, I will stand with our family farms against large factory farms that pollute our environment. Wisconsin has had a rich farming history and heritage, and we must support our farmers and protect our farmlands. COVID has highlighted some of the challenges our students and parents that face also. It shows that teachers also need our support. So we must make sure that schools, teachers, and students have the resources they need to succeed, especially fully funding special education. As a small business owner, I know the challenges of keeping the doors open and making payroll. 
We need to continue to invest in small businesses all across our state of ours that's been hit hard by the pandemic and really face workforce shortages. And to do that, we must make sure that childcare is more affordable and accessible. I'm passionate about the value of early education. And because of my passion and expertise, Governor Evers selected me to serve on his transition team focus on policy related to children and family. And I currently sit on the governor's early childhood advisory council. And finally, as the Wisconsin court decision on redistricting showed us, we need to continue the fight for fair maps, for representation, for equal representation, and to protect our right to vote. We need to build a coalition to elect Democrats up and down the ticket. And as disappointing as the Supreme Court decision was, it also reinforces my commitment mm -hmm. to doing all I can to move Wisconsin forward. I look forward to talking to you more about these issues with you and listening to what's on your mind. And I'm sure you have many solutions and I wanna find ways to work together to meet these challenges. My campaign is strong and inclusive, focus on the future and how we make Wisconsin even better. So no other candidate for Lieutenant Governor brings the diverse executive experience I have to this race. I've been a public servant all my life. I know how to work with people to get things done and solve tough problems. I'm a tenacious fighter and I'll stand up for our shared values. I really wanna put these skills to work for the people of Wisconsin and to ensure that we reelect Governor Evers. Please visit my website, Paying Her for Wisconsin, to get involved in our campaign. And you know, now make sure the papers are out. So we're always looking for volunteers for that. I'm sure you know and understand the importance of getting folks on the ballot. And I'm so honored to be here and I would be honored to earn your support, your endorsement and your vote. And so thank you so much for this opportunity to introduce myself. And again, thank you for all you do for our democracy here in Wisconsin. I look forward to any questions you might have. Thank you so much. Thank you, that was great. Uh, questions? Nancy. So uh, you, you said that you have been a public servant all your life, but you started out as a physicist. So can you explain <laughs> your transition a little bit? Yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, so my training is in physicist, as a physicist, but when I moved to Wisconsin, um, you know, the Hmong community here didn't have um, community leaders who spoke fluent English. And when issues came up, um, they, they needed someone to help uh, give a voice to them. And so I started, you know, uh, working with the community here about uh, some of the challenges they face. You know, something as simple as um, setting up a meeting with the mayor. And they felt that, you know, in the culture they grew up in back in Laos, you were taught not to challenge authority and even having a meeting with an elected official or someone of power was um, oftentimes discouraged because um, the fact of the matter was sometimes if you your head popped up too much and spoke too much, it gets chopped off, right? Because you're um, in a country that um, doesn't support that type of advocacy. And so just uh, encouraging them and, in bring, and, and setting up a meeting with the mayor um, and, and bringing them there to talk about the challenges they face here. And that's how I really got my foot into the door about advocacy. And, um, and then also when there was um, issues in the community, being able for the community to rely on a trusted person to go out and speak on behalf of the community, to share their concerns, and then share also solutions they have to. And so um, that's how I got started in this, um, what I'll call public work, public service um, um, uh, world that I've been doing for a long time now. Thank you. But it doesn't, ha it doesn't hurt to have a physicist on your side though. Really? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just yeah, say, yeah. Did you say that you're on the board at Access? Yeah, so I'm the board president of Access. Oh, great. I've been there for I, almost five years now. Wonderful. My daughter is a nurse there, by oh, the way. Okay. okay. <laughs> which clinic, which location is she at? Uh, East, I believe. Oh, the uh, the EVU uh, Medical Center then probably on East Washington? I, be I believe so, except that's closer to her home. And she said she was further away. So I, I couldn't honestly tell you, I don't know which one. What's the other one called? So there's several, there's uh, Evview is on East Washington. Then the Erdman is on the South side. Then we have one in Sun Prairie and then oh. um, one in Dodgeville also. Yeah, no, I was just talking about in, in Madison, but yes. anyway, that's um, it's a really terrific 
organization there too. So thanks for your work there. It is, and that's why I'm committed to, to, to having been on it for five years. And I, I when um, Dr. Loving, who's the uh, CEO, approached me to sit on the board, I told him that at one point in my life, I sat on seven boards. And um, I had, uh, when my terms were done, I stepped down and I'm, I've been focusing on the work I do. And, but because I'm so committed to the work I have access to, I would come out of board retirement and come sit on his board. Oh, cool. <laughs> Well, thanks. Early. So it seems like every election cycle, when we have people running for statewide office, um, they mention their ability to succeed in the city, and they mention their ability to succeed statewide, um, even though those two types of successes are not the same. So how would you tailor your success uh, approach in the city, and how would you tailor your campaign to uh, succeed in the rest of the state? And by the city, I mean uh, Milwaukee. So one of the things I learned that uh, the role of the Lieutenant Governor, it's the second highest uh, position in our state, and it's a very important position. It's a position that can really impact people's lives and help shape policy. And so uh, that's one of the reasons why I, I want to run for Lieutenant Governor. Um, you know, the success I've had, it's about bringing people together to solve a common challenge. And so as Lieutenant Governor or as a candidate, I'd be able to bring people, the right people to the table to solve that problem. And when I say the right people, I don't just talk about academics and experts, right? I'm also talking about the people who are closest to the issue and hearing their voices and hearing what their solutions are. And so I'm going to use that strategy to go out and meet the people, listen to um, what's, um, what challenges they're facing, listen to their solutions and make sure that their voice and their concerns are being brought to our elected officials. And then if I have the good fortune of being elected, making sure that I work on those challenges and continue working in those communities to solve those challenges that they have. Okay, so if that sounds very um, positive, um, but in the campaign stage, do you have any plans for how you're going to be setting up statewide to help Governor Evers, um, both within the urban and the, the rural, where, since the rural seems to be such a tremendous challenge to the Democrats? Yeah, so one thing that we've done and then continue to do is how do we reach out to grassroots organizations? It's about uh, building those uh, fundamental building blocks and going back to our core constituency for the Democrats, right? And so as someone that's been a public servant and someone that's been doing a lot of grassroots organizing, it's reaching out to, to those community leaders and building that solid base and spreading um, information about what the Democratic Party has been doing in the past, right? I think we don't do a very good job of touting the, the successes we've done as a Democratic Party, uh, whether it's the... Um, um, the funding that Governor Evers have given to schools and to mental health issues, as well as um, some of the funding to uh, help clean up some of the environmental challenges we have in Wisconsin, whether it's the PFAS, the uh, what we call forever chemicals that we have in our waters. And we're fortunate that, um, that we, we're getting about $143 million from the federal folks, but also Governor Evers has made it a priority creating a task force with Lieutenant Bar Barnes being chair of that, right? And so how do we make sure that that messaging is getting across so folks understand that the Democrats are doing a lot for our community and not just what they hear, um, what Republicans are saying about, you know, what, the, what Democrats are not doing. And so that's how we're doing our campaign is those grassroots getting out in the community. And the same as in the rural area too, right? Sharing uh, what we're doing as Democratic Party, making sure that we reach out to everyone. Uh, I'm a firm believer in organizing. And so doing doors and canvassing, those are key parts of our strategy. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question. It was a good one. Kath? Okay, um, have you done any kind of polling yet about how, um, or how electable, you are. I mean, we want to win, you know, and 
and I think that the, as you say, the Lieutenant Governor is a huge part of that. And we need you and we need Governor Evers. So um, anyway, that's, I guess that's just what I, I want to know. And do you have people throughout the, the state? And, um, and I know we can help with that, but I wonder, you know, who else you've been talking to or how you're positioned, you know, outside of the cities? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So one of the things we've done is really reach out to the communities of color because I think that it's an untapped resource. And so we've got um, coalitions in the, the Southeast Asian community, the African, African American community, the Muslim community, up in the northeast corner of Wisconsin, there's a large Somalian community. And so reaching out to those folks and building that grassroots connection, as well as looking at uh, key leaders there too, because um, oftentimes it's those leadership that gets you into the door and talking to the folks. Um, you know, one of the strengths we have is the, our um, ability to have these connections as well as leaders that already support us in these different communities. Another part of our strength is um, being able to get votes from more rural and red parts of Wisconsin, right? Up in the sure. North part, because, um, you know, it's, 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 it's no secret that uh, Democrats do well in Madison and Milwaukee. And we need to make sure those votes come out and vote come this fall. But we also need to look at other parts of Wisconsin. And a recent study I, I looked at about 65% of um, Democratic voters come from rural Wisconsin. And so not only continuing to um, reach out to that base, but also then um, one of my strengths in my um, candidacy has been reaching out to those who um, in those red parts, whether it's the Appleton mm -hmm. and Walshaw and Marathon County to get votes in those areas to uh, turn uh, Wisconsin back to blue. Thank you. That's Wonderful. Great. Well, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. And uh, this is very informative. So thank you so much for coming and um, we will follow up. Well, thank you and have a great afternoon then. All right, and Sarah is waiting. Tell us about uh, yourself and sure. your campaign, why, why you're running. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I, I love seeing all of you guys on, on Zoom here and still engaged. You guys had a big success with uh, Representative Deb Andraka flipping that district. And also wanted to let you know, she has endorsed me for Lieutenant Governor. So um, I'm very happy to get that endorsement as well. Um, you know, like uh, Cheryl said, I, my, I'm Representative Sarah Rodriguez and I'm running to be your next Lieutenant Governor. I <laughs> have really dedicated myself to service, uh, starting off in healthcare. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Samoa where I did HIV AIDS education, reproductive health, all the way to being an executive within uh, healthcare systems where I manage large teams and multi-million dollar budgets. Believe I can be a really good partner to Governor Evers in something as large and complicated as the Wisconsin state government. But for much of my career, you know, I was a public health nurse and that's the lens that I wanna bring to the Lieutenant Governor's role, which is one of investment in our kids and communities and one of prevention. So I know, as a clinician that the medicine we give you, the procedures that we do, it's just such a tiny fraction of how healthy we are. It really is about where you live, the air you breathe, the water you drink, and whether you've got a good paying job to put food on the table and to pay for those medications. Before I even thought about politics, I've always been a big proponent of smart policy that affects communities in positive ways. And so I was the chronic disease director for the state of Colorado. And I was also a epidemic intelligence service officer with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, where I did national and international outbreak investigations. It's honestly why I ran for office the first time. It's because you can imagine how frustrated and frankly angry I was at the Republican led legislature's non response to COVID that they really put politics before people, especially in that spring election when we were still really learning about this virus and didn't know what was going to happen. And I 
still have healthcare friends who they told me during this time, you know, they said, Sarah, I have to steady myself in my car every day before my shift, telling myself that I will do the best that I can with the resources that are available to me. They were overworked, stressed out. And I remember that feeling. I was an ER nurse and I remember the panic in the pit of my stomach when you know patients kept piling in and I didn't feel like I could stretch myself far enough to be able to give my patients the care that they deserved. And yet these folks showed up every day with that same panic in the pit of their stomach for the last two years and they're still showing up. And they tell me now, even though hospitalizations have gone down, that every hospitalization now is sometimes even worse because it's preventable. And the misinformation on vaccines, the misinformation on COVID coming out of the Republican-led legislature, that is affecting real people's lives and real people's families. And it is so frustrating for them now to show up to those shifts, realizing that our Republican leadership has, has done that. So my first call to service was healthcare. My second call to service was running for office. And so I currently represent District 13 within the assembly. That's mostly the Western suburbs of Milwaukee. And as you mentioned with the maps, it has been carved up dramatically now. Um, but I flipped that district. It was a traditionally Republican district and I flipped it this last election cycle. So I know what it takes to win in a purple district. And I know the really hard work we're gonna have to do to win in a purple state this November. I love Wisconsin. I grew up here and I went away for college, but Wisconsin draws you back. And, and, I, and I love that because I wanted to raise my kids here. Uh, my roots run deep. My grandparents had a farm in Richland County and my mom went to a one room schoolhouse through eighth grade. Um, and Wisconsin does draw you back. Uh, and so I came back to Wisconsin. I grew up here, but I came back to Wisconsin because my father was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in his 60s. And mm. I knew that my mom was going to need some help with him. And, you know, being a nurse, being a clinician, I, I knew that I wanted to be there for her as she's always been there, there for me. And so they lived with us uh, for, my mother still lives with me, but they lived with us for years. My father actually passed away just um, right before the pandemic. And I, and I know if I ask any of you, um, you can, uh, I, this is one of the most difficult things that I've ever had to do in my life is to try to get him the health care that he earned. He was a Vietnam veteran, a Navy veteran. He was connected to the VA and, and other healthcare systems. Yet here I am, I'm a nurse, I'm a healthcare executive. And it was still so difficult for me to be able to find him the care to keep him safe. And I just don't think any family should have to deal with that. And I know if I asked you, you could probably all tell me stories of spouses or um, family members or others who've had to deal not only with dementia, but disabilities and trying to get them the help that they needed. And that's something that I'd like to focus on as Lieutenant Governor, which is that caregiving crisis that we have uh, within Wisconsin and frankly, across uh, the US. So I do love Wisconsin, but I can see that we are on, a, we are at a precipice. And you talked about it earlier about the maps is, you know, our voting rights are, are under attack consistently. And it is frustrating. I needed to take a beat myself after that Friday to think about how upset I was, uh, but we're going to continue fighting for fair maps. We're going to continue fighting for voter rights. Uh, schools, public schools, public education, which is wildly popular across the state, is also under attack from kindergarten all the way through college in Wisconsin. A woman's right to choose, something that felt settled and completed, is now again something that is up in the air in Wisconsin. And as a clinician, I, I know that those are real people's lives that we're talking about, real women's lives that we're talking about. It's not some abstract thing for me. And so all of these things are on the ballot this November. I can't think of anything more important than reelecting Governor Evers this November, particularly because we have these maps that came out this Friday. We're gonna need his veto pen more than we ever have before. And he's gonna need a strong partner on that ticket with him. So for me, I believe I have the executive experience to help with managing the state government. I have the policy experience uh, as a legislator, understanding how these things work. 
And to be honest, I'm a full-time working mom that has spent the last two years in this pandemic trying to make sure that all of my ends were sewn up. And I know what that experience was like. And I know that I can represent all 72 counties in Wisconsin. So I thank you guys so much for having me. I really do appreciate it. I am happy to answer any questions you might have. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, questions? Shirley. Hi. So um, uh, Mandela, as Lieutenant Governor, has had a certain uh, set of areas that he's focused on, um, particularly the environment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, would you continue to place that kind of um, emphasis on the environment uh, and how? Um, and would you also be um, extending that uh, into the healthcare areas? Or do you think there would have to be trade offs uh, in terms of, of focusing? Uh, the bulk of your efforts. I mean, he really, really put a huge emphasis on that. Right. And I don't know how it works in terms of um, how much uh, one can do, you know, can one do everything? So yeah. uh, I was well, wondering. That's why you have a full-time working mom doing these things. Cause I, you know, we, we, we work quite a lot and we do quite a bit. Um, so there are three, I mean, this is always up to Great answer. Numbers, right, <laughs> is um, what, what I, he would like me to focus on. Uh, I would like to focus on three areas and the environment is one of them. But the three areas that I'd like to focus on are, is number one, healthcare. I, I think that that's a critical area that we need, that I have expertise in, that I, it would be remiss of me not to bring that expertise to the Wisconsin state government. Uh, number two is the built environment. And I think taking a public health approach to that, uh, mm -hmm. building on Lieutenant Go Governor um, Barnes's work on the, the environment is really important to me. That's something that my family really appreciates about Wisconsin. We're big hikers, campers, backpackers, bikers. And I, I think for health reasons and for um, environmental reasons, we want to keep our areas pristine, but there's, there's also a lot of other reasons to do that, which includes tourism and bringing people into Wisconsin so we can generate additional revenue. Um, the third area that I'd like to work on is entrepreneurship, which is I, I own my own small business today, and we have a lower rates of entrepreneurship in Wisconsin than many other states within the country and, and really trying to figure out how we can make sure that we have a good environment for small businesses in Wisconsin, because they're really the lifeblood for, for different um, cities and towns. I'm not talking large corporations, although we, we wanna um, make sure that they're welcome here too, but how do we make sure that people who want to start small businesses are able to do that in a way that makes sense? So those are the three areas that I would like to work on with Governor Evers, and I uh, believe I can provide some really good input into that process. Thank you. Other questions? <clears throat> yeah, no, Norma. One of the biggest challenges around healthcare is how we build back a, um, uh, an understanding and awareness of public health. Mm -hmm. So your background and strength in that, I, I, I live in this household with a physician who has also lived through these two years and going and continuing. Um, pulling out his gray hairs every day, trying to convince yeah. people to care about themselves and their community. But anyway, that is a super challenge. And so the question really is, how do we build back that trust when we have this monster on the shoulders of healthcare saying it's all a lie? So Yeah. And we, we do have some work to do in terms of building back that trust. And we have folks within the community like your husband that are good messengers of that trust. And so what I often tell people is I tell people, please do not listen to your legislators. <laughs> please go to your personal physician yeah. and talk to them about this because they're the ones that have been on the front line. They're the ones that have this um, background and can talk to you. And that's the one you have a relationship with. So if, you know, I've said that on the floor of the assembly before they were talking about, um, that some really uh, terrible misinformation about vaccines. And I said, 
if anyone is listening to this and has questions about vaccines, please go to your personal physician and we need to be pushing them in that direction um, to be able to do that. But we also don't fund public health particularly well in right. Wisconsin. We, we are actually, depending on what number you look at, we're either last or second last in the country and funding public health, it's terrible. And I think we've seen that they did as much as they could with the resources mm -hmm. that they had available. But, right. you know, I, I'm on LinkedIn, which is, you know, this job, you know, it's like job site, if you're aware of it. And they, they send you things that say about, you know, different positions that they think you might be a match for. And because I have such a strong background in public health, all I see is that a lot of our county directors are leaving. A lot of those folks are leaving because this was such a stressful two years. And so a, we have to support them in what they're doing. B, we have to give them the funding that they need to be able to do this, um, this job well. And so those are the kind of things that I think we can do, really get physicians and nurses on board, people who, who the community trusts, and then branch that out to the larger public health community uh, to be able to make sure that, that we are rebuilding that trust in public health. Great, Lois. Um. I know you're familiar with with the cities in the, as you're running. But what 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 are your plans for dealing with the whole state, particularly um, up ways, uh, the rural areas? How do you expect? How are you planning to connect with them? And what is your plan? So. Our plan is, um, we've already started this, but we've hit um, almost all of the county parties, the Democratic county parties, not all of them, but many of them across the state. And some of them are doing things with Zoom. Some of them are doing things face-to-face. -face. We are also planning on traveling across the state. So this is going to be a statewide campaign. So we've got some dates down um, to go up north uh, for a while to be able to talk to folks and be able to um, make sure that we're listening to people up north. and so that we understand what their biggest concerns are. There are things that are, I think, universal across the state. People want good schools, they want affordable healthcare, they want housing that they can afford, um, they want good jobs to put food on the table. But there are things that are specific to rural areas. One of those things that I've been hearing is water quality is a really big deal up there. Uh, the broadband, not being able to have internet access and that their kids are leaving to go to larger cities. And they really wanna make sure that they have thriving communities in these rural areas, they want their kids to stay. And so how do we make sure that there are jobs for those children, or if they want to um, do a remote job in a more rural area, that they have the internet access to be able to do that. And so that really solves a lot of issues is this broadband um, initiative that Governor Evers has really pushed and put quite a bit of dollars into. Great. Um, well, I think we're about out of time, but um, again, I so appreciate your um, time and your dedication uh, to the state. And, um, you know, we're, we're girding for the battle and, um, you know, we'll definitely um, keep you in mind and hope that, uh, that we can pull this out. At least the maps don't impact the statewide races, right? It doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and we have to keep reminding people of that because. Yep. Um, yep. And it's even it more is, important. It's even more it important. Is, the statewide races are even more important. The Secretary yep. of State, the Attorney General, because if we have, um, if we have a Republican Attorney General, if we have a Republican Secretary of State, that Republican. Um, uh, led majority within the assembly and the Senate can change things uh, pretty dramatically in terms of responsibilities for those particular roles if a Republican gets in that seat. So it is just all statewide offices are critical this term, particularly because of those maps. Well, I keep saying we'll become Florida, right? <laughs> With a Republican governor. I mean, I think the, the backsliding that we'll see, it will be just. Yeah, it will affect horrific. our day-to-day -day lives. It, it will. It will affect our day-to-day -day lives, which is, um, I'm not sure that people quite understand that, but it will. Yeah. So we got to get people running in every district too, right? Yeah, so we even, do. Even if they can't win. <laughs> it helps the top of the ticket. It helps right. the Senate too. Right. I mean, Ron Johnson, right. we got to get him out of there too. So it helps, it helps all sorts of people. Yeah. Indeed. 
All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank and you. Um, I saw the yeah. links that um, that Kara put in the chat. So um, we will get those out to people as well. All right. Thank you so much for having me. You guys have a thank nice you. day. Bye. You too. Thank you. Um, we are generally familiar with you, but uh, tell us more about yourself and why you're running for lieutenant governor. Sure, sure. Um, and, and again, thank you guys so much for taking the time out. Um, I have been elected for 10 years already, eight at the state and several at the county board level. Um, I've been on the front lines for our families, for our future, and for the change that we want to see in the state of Wisconsin. And I see no better time than now. The toughest election cycle that we will face uh, is the 2022 election cycle and to re-elect Governor Tony Evers and to ensure that we are doing everything we can to, to make sure that Republicans are controlling everything. That's why we get one shot at this. We must have a united front. We must have a really strong ticket. And I believe my advocacy and leadership that I've displayed formally as elected official, but even before that as an advocate out in our communities for quite some time, I believe that will be uh, the connection, the grassroots connection that we need to ensure that folks are coming out to vote, they, that they believe that we it's time for us to protect our democracy. It's time for us to rebuild our economic ladder. Uh, it's time for us to center and amplify the voices of people. And that it's also important for us to keep the quality of life uh, through our environment and the environmental justice that we all deserve. We have to protect what we breathe, what we drink, what we eat, we have to protect uh, everything that is connected to us, what we farm uh, in the state of Wisconsin. So there's so many things that we need to do, uh, but it really reminds me of the very first protest that I ever was a part of almost 20 years ago. Uh, the KKK decided to come to Milwaukee and spread their divisive message. I was a teenager at that rally and we were a part of the opposition. And I noticed something really important at the time that those who were spewing a message of hate and division, that there were less of them and there, there were more of us. And I see that same thing happening today in this election cycle. There are those who wanna take us back. There are those that want to hinder progress, but there are less of them and there are more of us, more of us that believe in a progressive message to move our state forward. And when you really dive into it, you can see that Governor Evers in his reelection bid has done everything in his power to be a champion and an advocate for the state of Wisconsin. We see that he has been met with fierce opposition by Robin Voss, by uh, Senator Lemahieu and the members of the GOP in the state where they have just been fuming mad that they have not controlled everything since 2017. It is a new day. I remember being vice chair of the Democratic Party in 2015, uh, as we were going through loss after loss after loss, and we finally were able to turn that around. If you remember those days, you will remember that they weren't that happy. Uh, they weren't that chipper. We all were down because Republicans controlled the governor's house, the Senate, and the assembly, and they were running roughshod over everything that we wanted to see and do. We saw our unions attacked. We saw our teachers attacked. We saw funding for our children attacked. Um, and we saw marginalized communities, oppressed communities, become even more under threat under their leadership. And that's the same thing that we face in 2022. We have been on a roll, thankfully, by turning around those losses and turning them into wins and getting Democrats elected statewide. We picked up seats in the state assembly uh, where we have held the line and protected the governor's veto. I'm so thankful for the colleagues that I've had a chance to work with where we saw the value in making sure that we brought balance back to state government. But in 2022, we have a chance to lose it all again. And I don't think anyone on this call, anyone in Grassroots North Shore, anyone in the state of Wisconsin that make that wants to have a progressive future wants to see that happen. So it is important that we come together in this moment 
and really focus on what is it that residents, that voters want to hear as we just saw in the uh, spring elections that voter turnout is down. People need to hear some messages and they need to feel some energy to get them engaged in their democracy again while it's under the biggest attack that we have seen in quite some time. They have to see us stand up for their quality of life. No matter where they live in each corner of the state of Wisconsin, every family needs access to opportunity. They need access to an economic ladder. We have to ensure that we have a democracy that they can trust, that they can have their votes counted, that it is truly one person, one vote, and that we can ensure that our, uh, our process uh, of our elections is fair um, and it is undeniable to the fact that we have our most secure elections uh, in, in modern history. It's also important that this role as Lieutenant Governor of the state of Wisconsin, that I step up to be the voice of people in the governor's ear. Uh, it's one of the most important parts of this role. And uh, my, my history uh, in, in being a fierce advocate, very loud and very engaged, in the, on, on the ground, in the streets, but also in the state capitol, uh, that we have someone who will be the voice for people in the governor's uh, executive branch. I plan on being that voice. Um, and, and once again, one of the biggest detriments that we can see uh, is that our, even our, our environment and way of life, our, our natural amenities and assets are under attack. Um, and we've seen that with PFAS. We've seen that with uh, chronic wasting disease in our uh, the deer that we're hunting. Um, we're seeing a number of different things, especially in our water and protecting water for the state of Wisconsin, that we don't allow corporate interests to get away with not paying their fair share to protect our water. So I humbly ask for your support in a very tough time. Uh, in a tough election cycle where I believe my leadership of unifying people across the spectrum, across the spectrum of the Democratic Party um, and even moderates as well, that it can happen in this election cycle where we are able to move forward. And I truly think that this role as lieutenant governor is so important in this election cycle. We need the energy. We need the message that will hang on to individuals as they make their decision, not who they're voting for, but if they're going to vote at all, because they are so downtrodden on believing that any change is possible. Um, and I'm pretty uh, confident in, in my history in the state of Wisconsin, in the local level, uh, in, in two elected offices, but also engaged in the Democratic Party of Wisconsin as well where I've had a chance to go across the state and engage folks on the grassroots level um, and the grass tops level, that we have a chance to do this. I truly believe we can. So thank you uh, so much for giving me the time today. And if you have any questions, I will take them as well. Yes, uh, questions. Sure. Nancy. So. We are very concerned, of course, with our own uh, bailiwick, as it were, the northern suburbs of Milwaukee and, and uh, the gettable parts of Ozaki County. Um, but it's a big state, and there's lots of parts of it that we know not of. Um, so what, what are your relationships like out there in the non-urban areas? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's... Uh... Well, I'm so thankful of my experience being vice chair of the Democratic Party of Wisconsin under Martha Lanning at the time. Um, I had a chance to crisscross the state and, and get very used to building those grassroots connections. If you notice in the transition, as we started to rise back to winning elections again, there were some very significant places in the reddest areas of the state that Democrats started to win again. We won the city of West Bend. We won the city of Waukesha. This was dreams ago that you, you would even think that we could pull those things off. But we're having really good conversations in those communities as Democrats 
And uh, you're seeing it in Sheboygan. You're seeing it in a number of different areas of the state where we can have a new conversation that we weren't able to have before. Um, and I think we're, it's going to take us pushing even further uh, to do that in the 2022 election cycle um, as we see a, a number of seats that will be open and we can have fresh candidates with fresh voices uh, to be able to consider uh, for the voters in those areas who they will support. Um, and uh, you, you also have some old uh, names pop up as well. I think I just heard that Bob Donovan, who just ran for mayor of Milwaukee, very right wing, very Trump like candidate, um, is thinking of running for state assembly. So you're you're going to see some pretty strong right wing ties aiming for those seats, but we also need to bring a fresh perspective um, and and really good energy to those seats as well, folks that that don't have to be uh, uh, super progressive. They, they have to be relatable to those districts. And I, I think that's what we're seeing right now. And, and even in our conversations on uh, what is left-leaning, what is progressive, I think we're, we're having a much more broader conversation than we've had in the past in those areas of the state um, where folks wanna have new conversations on um, the, the obligations that the wealthiest among us uh, should have uh, the conversations that we know that we need to do and in investing into the systems of education, systems of public safety uh, that we know that we need to invest in. So it's some, it's some ironic things happening right now, uh, but it's all happening very quickly and in this election cycle. And my connections run really deep in, in many areas of the state and especially the reds areas of the state. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, Maybe one more really, really quick question if somebody has a quick one. Are we good? We are good. All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us, David. And um, well, as I, I said- have one more quick question. Oh, okay. David, do you have uh, nomination papers that you want to circulate? Yeah, my team can get that to you. Uh, as yes. we are collecting si uh, signatures and uh, see if we can get some signatures from grassroots North Shore, that'd be great. Yeah, so my plan is to put links to people's nomination papers uh, up and, and uh, to publicize it in the newsletter that goes out on Tuesdays so okay. people can help circulate your papers. Don't forget to, your team, mm -hmm. don't forget to tell them that they need to make sure people understand where to send them back or yeah. them off. Very right. good point. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you thank so much you. for joining us. Absolutely. Uh, good Thanks, luck. guys. We're in the fight. So, and we'll really see appreciate you. it. I hope you guys aren't as uh, threatened by the challenge as I'm hearing from some people. Some people are so down right now and they just think that we're going to get wiped out. And I'm like, guys, this is exactly where we used to be. We Absolutely. have made our way out of it before and we can do it again. We right. cannot afford to do anything other than believe we're going to win and do everything. And we, we have prevailed. We have That's prevailed. Right. We prevailed yeah. in Mequon with their yes. school. There you go. That's, yes, not right. Small. That's right. That's yep. right. That is huge. Twice. We did it. Twice. Right. Yep. Yep. Among other things. <laughs> That we've been, exactly. and we, we prevailed in Fox Point with a challenge and, yes. and the county yes. supervisors. So we, I, we grassroots has had our nose in a few things. Yeah, yep. uh, yep. I'm so and proud of out. the work that you guys are doing. Yeah, we're going to continue. We'll be on that pavement and uh, we will be working as hard as we can to get every one of those little blue dots out there in Mequon or wherever, wherever That's we right. can find them. Yeah. All right, That's Dave, right. thank you for all you've done.